get my other one here. 0, 0, 1, 3, 3. And remember, I rounded these threes, so the more threes I put in, the more precise this would be. Times 3,000. All right, 3.99. All right, here's what I want you guys to see. And don't, don't ever let this throw you off on your calculations. This, <clears throat> before we even started working this, I knew that these two voltages should equal and these two voltages should equal. And notice they're very close, 3.99 and 7.98. The reason they're not exactly 8 and that this is not exactly 4 is due to my rounding of the numbers, especially when I calculated current. So, I'm going to go ahead and round these numbers up from 7.98 to 8, which is going to round, and 3.99 to 4. Alright, now, the reason I say that I knew these would equal is because of the voltage divider formula. You notice, again, we know that 12 volts has to drop here, and we know that 12 volts has to drop here. Well, the amount of voltage that's going to drop on each resistor is proportionate to the size of the resistor. So, if this resistor is 2K and this resistor is 1K, look over here. This resistor is 3K, this resistor is 6K. This resistor is three times the size of this one, and this resistor is three times the size of this one. So that means that whatever the voltage divider ratio was that existed here, it's going to exist over here too. So meaning, if this drops 8 volts, this has got to drop 8 volts as well. Same with here. 4 volts here, 4 volts here. Again, this is calculated. If you were actually to set this up on your board, you have to account for resistor tolerances and so forth. But if your resistors were exact, this would prove true. 8 volts and 8 volts, 4 volts and 4 volts. So, for part 1, we've solved the, the Wheatstone Bridge as a simple series parallel circuit. And we find that because the voltage drops here and here are 8 volts, that there is no difference of potential between points A and B, and this is called a balanced Wheatstone bridge.